Alright, this is going to be another movie review, but let me first say that uh, I mistakenly said the next item on my uh, Netflix Instant Q was um, Rwanda in the 1950s, something about that. Um, actually, this, uh, this film takes place in Kenya in 1950, uh, right before a state of emergency was declared. And, um, Many, many Africans were slaughtered. Um, the, I'd say about... Uh, the, there were three things that I disliked about this movie. I would say the first thing is that they talk in their native tongue a lot in this. and um, There's English subtitles, but when you click on the, uh, on the English subtitles, it, it just spells out the Kenyan words phonetically it's not r really English subtitle so that kind of pissed me off um, this is another canon release by the way um, the second thing uh, I'd say about seven-eighths of the movie glorifies British rule like uh, the Brits are these great people to um, to conquer foreign land uh, hell if I was in Kenyan and I saw some white dude taken over my land I'd be hella pissed too so I don't, I don't understand the uh, the bias towards British rule in this one um, uh, granted towards the end there is a little bit of uh, uh, it, it does show the uh, the brutality or the futility I should say of trying to govern uh, people in Africa, I mean, this was just a waste of time, a waste of money, and it was just uh, caused a lot of uh, unnecessary, useless deaths, um, in my opinion. Um, but they do show torture at the end. Um, I, I don't think torture is a very effective tactic. I mean, yeah, they, uh, they got the uh, impressionable boy to find out where the hideout was, but then uh, the ending just sort of proves the whole futility of their effort. Um, so there's that. I'll, I'll give them an extra star for uh, showing the futility of going after the bad guys, or the so-called bad guys, as they say, uh, as they portray the, the this uh, fictional tale. It's not r really historically accurate, I, I don't believe, but um, what do I know? Um, so there's that. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd give them an extra star for the ending. Um, they, they even do a, a little crawl at the end to say exactly how many whites and how many blacks were killed in 1952. Um, it's disproportionate, of course, in favor of the whites. I think there were 80 whites that were killed and um, tens of thousands, maybe, um, of Africans or uh, Kenyans that were killed in subsequent uh, state of emergency. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. That was probably the best part of the movie where they actually show disproportionate statistics. Um, but other than that, I disliked this movie. I thought it was, I thought the build-up was kind of boring. I mean, at least in an audition, there's Japanese people talking about how uh, hopeless it all is. These people, these British, they just kind of uh, sit around and pretend that all is well when they they know damn well that it's not a uh, land of milk and honey that they were promised. Um, but they, they discovered that at the end, I guess. Um, and uh, it gets much worse a couple years later, I guess. So, um, yeah, there's that aspect of it. And um, I didn't know anything about uh, British rule in Kenya. I mean, I've seen a couple of movies uh, that show a couple, uh, pompous British guys uh, sipping tea in their hut. 
But other than that, there, <coughs> there really hasn't been uh, this this um, British occupation hasn't really been well documented by um, by filmmakers, at least the films that I've seen. Uh, this this had the feel of kind of like a Mondo movie, uh, fake documentary. And like I said, uh, most of the movie was heavily biased towards the British, so I didn't, I didn't uh, you know, I, I kind of took it with a grain of salt. You know, white people good, uh, Kenyans bad. That, that's the way the first 80% of the movie <coughs> is portrayed. Uh, granted, the uh, British police dude, he, he has an affair with some girl. I don't know if that's his, uh, his niece or what's going on with that. But he likes to take her out in the car and, uh, and dry hump on her in, inside the car. Um, I don't know if it's dry humping. They don't really show anything. But uh, it's kind of a comely looking uh, young um, young, comely looking uh, uh, blondie, kind of flat chested. Um, the policeman dude, he he he, he likes to uh, show off his bare chest. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about, but he's got pretty furry chest for uh, for a white dude. And um, so there's that and. Uh, not too much else going on. It's just about a boy who uh, becomes a kitchen toto, whatever that is, because the uh, the Kenyan rebels they uh, they kill his father. I don't know why his father is uh, he's like a Presbyterian minister or something, and, um, and then the rebels try to. Uh, try to get the minister to uh, proselytize his flock by telling them to uh, go up against the white man and support the rebels or whatever. Um, the minister refuses so he ends up getting killed in the beginning and then um, and then the minister's wife she's got like four or five kids she can't handle it so she tells the uh, oldest son to go work for the white policeman, and um, and the rebels come back, start bugging them and telling them to um, get into this oath deal where they have to kill white people. Um, so there's that. I don't want to spoil the end. Um, it's just a lot of. Uh, the uh, Kenyan boy and the little white boy going out in the forest and uh, catching animals. Um, the uh, Kenyan boy gets caught at one point, and uh, there's like there's like a white landowner who's all into private property stuff. He he thinks the uh, Kenyan boy is a is a uh, poacher. So he ties him up to the tree and leaves him there, and um, and he ends up getting rescued by the rebels. Ironically enough, that happens about three fourths of the way through the movie. Um, I just couldn't really get interested in this movie. I didn't. I thought it was kind of boring the build up. Um, in audition, at least they had uh, older Japanese dude trying to hit on a younger coming looking uh, Japanese girl that was kind of amusing but this build up was too slow and too damn boring for me at least um, so that's why I gave it two stars on Netflix uh, I didn't really enjoy it that much um, there was enough action or uh, or um, rebel stuff going on for most of the movie. They just kind of hide in the shadows and they pop up every once in a while. So that was kind of annoying. Um, 
if they just uh, made it all action and not, none of this uh, sitting around or catching animals, then it would have been a better movie in my opinion. But that's just me. Uh, I'm going to cut this uh, off at 10 minutes because I don't have anything else to say about it. Um, uh, you can catch it on Instant View if you want. Um, that's what I did. Um, now I'm trying to remember the name of the next movie. My cue. Yeah, I'm going to watch that next and then I'll review it later.